I, I imagine by now you're really discouraged with the calculus. Uh, you wish you probably never signed up for the course. Uh, but I want you to realize you went through the worst thing. It's kind of like a initiation process. So now you are thoroughly initiated. And uh, I'm not going to say it's going to become super simple, but it's going to become a little bit easier. Let's start out with the one that you had. Now our variation on one. Let's suppose you had 4x squared. And you wanted to take the derivative of that. So you want to take the first derivative, uh, let's call it function of x, because that's kind of how we've been working them. Function of x or y, it means the same thing. So uh, let's see, we had f of x equals 4x squared, then f of x plus h was what? That was four times x plus h squared. And then we took the limit of that. We, we wanted to use a difference quotient. So we had function of x plus h minus function of x divided by h. This is a difference quotient, dq. And uh, we took the limit as h was approaching zero, right? And we said that is, okay, well, here's f of, f of x plus h, that was four times x plus h squared minus f of x, which was four x squared. And that was all divided by h. And of course we take the limit as h approaches zero. So this became, uh, we had to distribute that out and we said that was an x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, you know, it was x plus h times x plus h. And you can do a FOIL and that's what you get. Minus 4x squared over h. And then we distributed that 4x squared plus 8xh <clears throat> plus 4h squared minus 4x squared all over h. Okay, and then we uh, saw that these two terms should have canceled and we can factor out an h, 8x, plus 4h over h. And then our h is canceled. And then we got 8x plus 4h. But we take the limit as h approaches 0 of that function. So that would give us a 0 here. That would be 8x plus 4 times 0, which would be 8x plus 0 or 8x. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce you to a new rule. This is called the power rule. This is a rule where you see all this work that we just knocked our brains out doing all this work we're going to do in our head. Believe it or not. The power rule simply says this. It's on page uh, 145 in your book. It says simply multiply the two times the four, eight, and subtract one from the power. Multiply and then subtract one from the power, eight x. Y equals Y prime, let's put Y prime on this one. If Y equals four X squared, Two times four is eight. Two minus one is one. <clears throat> eight X to the one or eight X. You're saying, why did you show us this sooner? Well, it's kind of like paying your dues. 
Uh, let's try a few of these that they got in the book. Let's see if they meant. Make any sense? X cubed. Three times X. And subtract one. Three X squared. Y equals this. Derivative is three X squared. Um, one over X. One over X, you can see that was kind of hard. I think we did that. And then there was an X plus H and oh my gosh, it was a one over X plus H. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> or minus one over X and blah, blah, blah. You know. So we can bring this up. That's what Y is. You always want to simplify it as much as possible. Now we take the derivative. Negative one times one is negative one X. And we're going to add a negative one or subtract one. So that would be negative two. Write it in positive form. That would be negative one over X squared. None of this. You can do it in your head. Pretty fantastic, isn't it? Why did I tell you this sooner? Eh, that's what we always do in calculus. We make them sweat it. Now, this is going to be fairly easy, but it get a little tougher as we go along. There's going to be some variations. Here's another one. Y equals 1 over X squared. We're just going to let's make it 4 over X squared. It doesn't really matter. Okay, bring it up. Make that a negative. Multiply. Let's put out a new line and make sure we're showing the derivative. Negative 8. X minus 1 minus 3. Negative 8. X to the negative 3. Who would have thought you could have done that in your head? Square roots. We know how miserable square roots could be if you're using the uh, difference quotient. Y equals X to the one half. Okay, a little tougher. One half times X is one half X. Take away one or two twos. That would be X to the negative one half. Bring that portion down. So this is one half like that. X comes down, that would be X to the positive one half. Yeah, I guess you could just leave it like that, or you can even write it like this, 1 over 2 square root of x. A lot of times in calculus, we don't rationalize that. You could. You could write it as radical x. You know, multiply this by radical x and this by radical x. Yeah. Something like that. But you don't really have to. This is fine. You see, that's how they wrote it in the book. Much, a very difficult problem if you're going to use the, the uh, x difference quotient. So and now you don't know how to do these. Now we're going to apply something else to this uh, on, on page uh, 146. They got some more examples pretty much. You can do them with decimals or whatever. So we've done those. Um, let's move on then. Okay, um, a constant. Well, let's do one, uh, let's do a long problem. Y equals uh, 3X squared plus 2X plus 3. Now, the book will show you that we're going to take the derivative of each one of these. So there's a, and by the way, we could use Y, Y prime. Uh, <clears throat> Well, let's just go ahead and do this. I could write this as dy over dx. Then we're finding the first derivative. But we could write it like that instead of y prime. It's another way. And then they're going to write it like this, saying we're going to take the derivative of the first term plus the derivative. This is called the sum and difference rule. The derivative of the second term with respect to x and the derivative of the whole number with respect to x. This is kind of a formal way of writing it. 
So dy over dx is equal to the derivative of this would be 6x um, plus the derivative of this would be 1 times 2 is 2 x to the 1 minus 1 is what? 0. And this doesn't even have a, a, a number. So x to the 0 is 1. So this would be 6x plus 2. And the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of a constant is 0. Or derivative of a number is 0. So this is simply 6x plus 2. Now, we probably wouldn't write it as fancy as they did. I mean, you know, for demonstration purposes, but you know, after we get going, we just write it as 6x, 2 times 3 is 6, take away 1. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 from 1 is 0, x to the 0 is just 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and this would be just 0, so it's 6x plus 2. Let's try another one of those. Uh, here's one. 7x to the fourth um, minus 9x minus 1 over 5x squared plus 3. Oh, you're probably saying this is heaven compared to what you were doing before. In fact, maybe some of you couldn't even get through what we were doing before. You said, heck with it. If it gets any harder, I'm quitting. But it's not. 28 x to the third minus what? 9, just 9. 9x nine simplifies to 9. Bring this up. I'm just going to write up here. The 5 can't come up. What am I doing here? The x can come up. x to the negative 2. So this is tell. Well, it's one-fifth right now. I'm going to multiply this by negative two, so it's going to be negative two-fifths. See, because this is negative two times the one-fifth. And then this would be x to the negative three. And then, of course, that's zero. So now my final answer could be 28x cubed minus nine minus two, I want to put it like this, five x to the third, like that. We can write it two fifths, but I think it's better that way. Super cool, isn't this? This is fantastic. This is nice. Okay, here's an interesting one. Volume of R equals four thirds pi R cubed. What do we do? Let's, leave, let's make it even harder. Plus pi. We're making crazy here. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to multiply this 3, but think of pi. Pi is a number. Pi stands for 3.14. Pi is not a variable. So this is 3 times 4 thirds. That's just going to give me 4 pi r to the second plus, since pi is a constant, it's a number, disappears. So it's 4 pi r squared. And that's what the first derivative, and we would write it like this. Now, this r means that maybe we wanted to substitute in a number. They could say find uh, v prime 3. So what they're saying here is take our derivative and substitute a 3 in place of the r. And now we got 3 squared, which is 9 or simply 36 pi, see? So we can put a number in. 
another way they might write it like this, this is going back to the first page, they might write it like this, D, V, finding the derivative of P with respect to R, not X, because there's no X in this problem. So this would be DR. And then they put kind of a line down here and then R equals three. This is another notation for the same thing. Now a little fancy, I don't usually use this, but once in a while it does come up. So we know that this would be still 36 pi. Thank you. All they're saying is take the derivative of V with respect to R and then substitute in R a three and you got your answer. Let's see if there's any that we can totally confuse you. Now, we, there's some that we can't get to yet because there's a few more rules we have to cover. Uh, okay, so on page 151, we got some more interesting problems. So they wrote the problem this way. And then this is saying, take the derivative of this with respect to x and let us solve it for x. So we know that would be um, the derivative of each part. I guess I would just write it like this. This would just be, I mean, it's, 15x squared minus zero. That one might throw you. It takes a little while to get, you want to sometimes write this as 7x, but you don't want to do that. So, pretty amazing. Let's try another one here. Or I might, another way I could have written that is I might write dy over dx is 15x squared. Usually I don't put it in such a formal context, but we will when we get a type of derivative called implicit, uh, implicit uh, differentiation. But let's try this one. You can write a d dx like this. Just getting used to the different forms. They might even write it as function of x like that. Now here's another way you could write the same problem. I'm going to bring this up right away. And then we would just write f prime x. We're solving for the derivative. Derivative of this is what? 24, 1 minus 1, just 24. This one, I guess I should have simplified. This is x to the 1 half. That one's always a little tricky. So that's minus one half x, one half minus two twos, negative one half. And then this one, and we're simplifying the next step, negative five x, negative two. We want the answers in, in uh, positive exponents. I was searching for the word there. Okay, so this is minus two. And, you know, it started out as a, we could write x to the one half. It would not be wrong, but let's just leave it as the square root of x. And here, um, I already took the derivative. I don't want to get confused. So this is minus five, and the x goes to the bottom, five x squared. This is on page 151, there's an example like that. Slopes of the tangent line. One last thing, I think. Okay, example six in your book says, find the points on the graph function of x equals negative x cubed plus six x squared at which the tangent line is horizontal. Okay, one thing I didn't mention last time is there's certain, we want to solve at certain key points. And if you have, I'm just going to put your book here. These are key points right here. 
Let me show you. When when the when there's a, a missing when uh, it's not continuous, that's a key point. Another key point is when this uh, point reaches a, a like a V. That's a key point. When it doesn't have a smooth curve, that's a key point. Key point. This this would be a key point, probably down here, a transition point. And this is a key point when it's horizontal. These are key points in the horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. When they peak out or bottom out, it has to be a smooth curve. I don't know if X X eleven would be a key point necessarily or not. It's kind of, those are what we call critical points. You can look on this one too. Let's see if I can put it down here. I have no way of making this bigger. Sometimes we can't. Key point, key point, key point, key point, key point, key point, kind of a, not a good curve. Transition point. When it's completely vertical, that's also another. So on this particular problem, let's go back to this problem if I can find it. Where was this? I lost my page here. All right, this is on page. So what we want to do is take this, we want this derivative to be set equal to zero. Okay, it says in which the tangent line is horizontal. Remember, this, this first derivative is your slope. The slope of a horizontal line, which would be something like y equals 2, the slope is 0. The slope of a horizontal line is 0. So if we want this, we want to find the points at which the graph is tangent to this. OK. so. We want to first of all take the derivative of this and set it equal to zero. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to take this derivative and let's see what we get. We get negative 3x squared. We're going to take the derivative plus what? 12x. That's right. Look at you doing these in your head. Oh my God, you're doing them here. Remember, we took a whole sheet of paper to do Think about x cubed, x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Think about doing this one, x to the 10th power. Oh, my God. It would have taken you a month and a year to do that. 10x to the 9. You know, pretty amazing. Anyhow, sidetrack. Let's go ahead and factor this out. We're going to take out a negative 3x. And then give us x plus 4. OK? And we're going to set that equal to 0. And then we're going to solve that. We're going to solve both parts. Negative 3x equals 0. Oh my gosh, what would x be? I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. I can divide 0 by a number. That's right on. I can't divide negative 3 by 0, but I can divide by a number, and that's 0. X plus 4 equals 0. X is negative 4. We've got our two answers. Isn't that great? Now, what are we going to do with these uh, two answers? OK. We're going to take these two answers, and we're going to put them back into the original problem. And that will give me y. We always substitute back into the original problem to find y, function of x, or y. So we put a zero in here, boom, it's pretty obvious, it's zero. Let's put a negative four in here, that's a little bit harder. Uh, we'll just work it over here to the side. Negative parentheses, four cubed, negative four cubed, excuse me, plus six times parentheses, negative four squared. So a negative four cubed is four times four is 16, 16 times 4 is 64. That's a negative 64, but I wanted a negative. I wanted the opposite of that. You can think of it as a negative 1 times that or the opposite of that. 
So I wanted the opposite of a negative 64, which is a positive 64. Now here we had 16 positive times six, I guess that's 96. So did I do this right? And then we had, hmm. Isn't this a, a negative x cubed? I thought we were putting in a negative x cubed. Negative four, x was negative four. Oh. When I took, I, I goofed. Okay, I see my mistake. When I took out the negative 3x, negative 3x times x was x squared. Negative 3x times 4 would be negative 12x. This needed to be a minus, which gave me a plus, which gave me a plus. When I cubed it, I got positive 64, but I wanted the opposite of that. So I needed negative 64. Simple, simple algebra mistake. And that's what you got to be careful. It's the algebra that always gets you, not the calculus, it's the algebra. So this is 32. There we go. Okay. So y is 32. Okay. So now we got key points over here. It says, okay, this, the points are zero, zero as shown. Okay. It says, we are to find the points on the graph. It says, what was the question? Find the points on the graph at which the tangent is horizontal. These are the two points at which it's horizontal, 0, 0, and 4, 32. At those two points, the graph will be horizontal. And they show a picture of it. You know, it's kind of coming through the origin here. So it's horizontal at that point. The tangent, remember, tangent just barely touches this. And then way up here, at and way up here at 32, and then it comes down. Okay, if you remember from algebra, when you have an expression that's x squared, uh, an x squared curve goes down and then comes back up. A negative x squared is going to start at the bottom and come up. This is doing just the opposite. You notice it's negative x cubed. An x cubed function starts at the bottom, comes up, goes up, and ends at the top. See? And a negative x cubed starts at the top, goes down, and will come up, down again. This is where it's going to end up, in a negative going down, in the positive going up, in the negative going down in the positive coming up that's where it ends so that's something you can kind of notice when you're doing these this is going to end on the end at the negative and it's good to recognize them um an x to the fourth what do you think an x to the fourth is going to go it's going to go or something like that it may not work exactly it might just have a big hole turn there and it's so slight that you don't even see it you know so anyhow if you can recognize those curves so uh let's see analyzing a function by its derivative we're not going to worry about it uh let's see i don't think we have to worry about example eight either we just want to kind of look at a couple of those and mess around with them the main thing we're concerned with is you being able to take the derivatives of these things. That's what we're really concerned with. So let's look at one more problem and then we we'll get out of here. Here's 143 function of x to the four thirds over four. Kind of really kind of terrible there, huh? Okay. So let's do this. Let's think of this as one fourth x to the four thirds. So let's think of it this way. 
So what we're going to do is take one fourth times four thirds. See? That's going to cancel out. This is times. That's one third. So function prime x is one third x. Now we're going to subtract one or three thirds. See, one and three thirds mean the same thing. So if we're taking away one or we're taking away three thirds, we got one third. Now, if we wanted to, we could write that even in radical form. Function prime x equals one third. And this was, remember, this is your index. And this is your power right there. Power index. <coughs> x to the four thirds. Index is the three. Power is the four. Think of pi. Power over index. Index power. And of course, don't forget the x. So I hope this uh, video helped. And, you know, it should be a lot easier. But try a bunch of these. Try a bunch so you get faster, quicker. Uh, they just come more natural. And it's still not going to be real easy. You know, problems like this are not super easy, but a lot easier than what you were doing before. And uh, you have a lot of fun with them. You know, this is kind of like one of the best parts of uh, Calc right here. And I hope you enjoy it.